Hello, this is Miss Augustine. Today we're going to do some stoichiometry calculations, specifically mole to mole, mole to mass, and then mass to mole. Now recall there are five types of stoichiometry problems that we will encounter. Um, here's the list of them, and the simplest are mole to mole, which is what we're going to do today, where you start with moles of something and you're finding out moles of something. Then I'm going to try mole to mass. You're given moles, asked for grams, and mass to mole, given grams, asked for moles. And recall that all of this is made possible through a conversion fact called a mole ratio, and it relates any two substances uh, involved in a chemical reaction. And where does it come from? The information comes directly from the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. So you, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using the coefficients of the balanced equation, and they will become your mole ratio, which is your conversion fact. And for mole to mole problems, you're going to be given moles of something, and you're going to be solving for moles of something. And so it's important that your mole ratio has moles of what you were given in the denominator and moles of what you want in the numerator so that you solve for the correct thing. So here's a problem. For the reaction where propane reacts with 5 moles of oxygen to produce 3 moles of carbon dioxide and 4 moles of water, <clears throat> if you were given the following problem, how many moles of oxygen are needed to produce 14 moles of carbon dioxide with excess propane. The excess propane part is just telling you there's plenty of propane you're not going to run, run out. So you always want to identify you were given this, the 14 moles of carbon dioxide, and you want to solve for moles of oxygen, and there's your moles of oxygen. When you first begin doing these problems, it's a good idea to circle the given and the unknown because those are the two things that will become your mole ratio. And specifically, the thing you want is going to end up in the numerator of your mole ratio, and the thing you were given will be in the denominator. So now let's solve. I've written out here 14 moles of carbon dioxide. Well, we start with the given times. Here's our mole ratio. Notice that moles of oxygen, which is the unknown, is in the numerator. Moles of carbon dioxide, which was what we were given, is in the denominator. And we solve, so we have to make sure that our units cancel. So again, moles of carbon dioxide is going to cancel out because numerator, denominator, and we're going to be left with moles of oxygen, which is what we're trying to solve for. So now all you have to do is plug these numbers into your calculator. And when you do, you get 23.33 moles of oxygen. That number has too many sig figs, so we're going to have to remember that we're going to round. We're going to start counting at the left. We need three significant digits, so our last number will be the three, and the number after it is a three, so we let it go. So our answer is going to be 23.3 moles of oxygen. Now our next problem is going to be given moles, solving for grams. So we're going to go from moles of A using the mole ratio to moles of B, and then here to go from moles of B to grams of B, we use our good old friend molar mass. Now for a problem. Same one, propane plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water, only now our problem goes like this. How many grams of oxygen are needed to produce 14.0 moles of carbon dioxide Again, with excess propane means we're not going to run out of propane. So let's identify. The given is carbon dioxide. The unknown is grams of oxygen. Circle them again in your equation so that you know what your mole ratio is going to be. And now let's solve. So we always are going to begin with molar mass in this case because we want to, we know that we're eventually going to get to grams of oxygen. So I always like to begin by doing my molar mass calculations. And here, since we're calculating molar mass for oxygen, we're going to say 2 times the atomic mass of oxygen, 2 times 16, 32. So now we can go and set up our problem. 
Notice here I'm starting with the given 14 moles of carbon dioxide. I'm multiplying first by the mole ratio, so I'm going from moles of this to moles of that, moles of carbon dioxide to moles of oxygen. Notice there are 5 moles of oxygen for every 3 moles of carbon dioxide. And then I'm now at moles of oxygen, so I will need to multiply by molar mass of oxygen, and that's what this part of the equation is. So let's go in and cancel units. So moles of carbon dioxide cancels. Moles of oxygen cancels. We're going to be left with grams of oxygen. So we're going to plug in 14 times 5 divided by 3 times 32. And we're going to get 746.6. Our number that we were given had three sig figs, so we're going to round. Our third digit is the 6. The number after is a 6, so we have to round to 747 grams of oxygen. So given 14 moles of carbon dioxide with an excess of propane, we can produce 747 grams of oxygen. So now we're going to do a mass to mole problem where we're going to start with grams, use molar mass to get to moles, use the mole ratio, and finally end up with moles of B. So the problem again is propane plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide plus water. How many moles of oxygen are needed to produce 61 grams of carbon dioxide with excess propane? And again, the excess propane means we're not going to run out. There's plenty. So identifying 61 grams of carbon dioxide is the given. How many moles of oxygen is what we're trying to solve for. And we're going to begin with our little molar mass box. 1 times carbon is 12.01, 2 times oxygen is uh, 32, and so we're going to end up with a molar mass of 44.01. Now for the setup. Beginning with our given 61 grams of carbon dioxide times this part here is molar mass. 1 mole of carbon dioxide has 44.01 grams. Notice we were given grams, and so our molar mass has to have grams in the denominator, and then we would get to our mole ratio, and in this case we want moles of oxygen, so 5 moles of oxygen for every 3 moles of carbon dioxide. Let's cancel, so grams of carbon dioxide cancels, moles of carbon dioxide cancels, we'll be left with moles of oxygen. 61 times 1 divided by 44 times 5 divided by 3 turns out to be 2.2. 310. The number we are given has three sig figs, so we're going to round to three significant digits. Now, I hope this helped a little bit. Um, again, I'm going to be making some more tutorials for you, but in each case, you'll always want to do as I did here, identify what you are given and the unknown, what you're solving for. If you circle those in your equation, then you'll know what's going to be in your mole ratio and again, always making sure that you include the unit and the compound so that you're making sure that, as I did in this case, you're working from carbon dioxide to moles of oxygen. This is Ms. Augustine signing off. I will be making more tutorials soon.